right, in this video, we're going to look at two problems that are similar to problems 21 and 22 found in your ATIT study manual underneath the mathematics sections quiz. We want to solve some equations here in these two examples. And the goal for any equation that you need to solve in the case of the T's test is to get the variable by itself on one side of the equal. Look at 21, for example. 5x minus 4 equals 3x plus 11. And I'm, I got this little line right here, and I'm just going to drag it up, and I'm going to put that right through my equals. And the goal is for us to get this x. We have two x's in this problem here, and we have to get it on one side, and we want to get that x completely by itself. Now, what you're really trying to do with any equation is, in this case, 5 times something minus 4 I want to get the same number over here that I could get over here when I take 3 times that number plus 11. That's the goal of the equation is to figure out what that number needs to be. And the first step we want to do here, I recommend taking the smaller variable. If you have variables on both sides, take the smaller variable and move it over. And notice I'm putting subtract 3x. The reason why we want to do that on both sides, we always do the inverse operations on both sides. I say inverse operation because 3x is positive. I want to subtract that 3x. That way they cancel out over here. If you had put plus 3x, that would have given you 6x, and that is not correct. We want to do the inverse operation. So 3x minus 3x is 0, which means this cancels out. Now let's bring down everything on both sides now. So over here on the left-hand side, 5x minus 3x is 2x. Bring down your minus 4. Bring down your equal. And what we have left over here is a positive 11. You can just write 11 because that's understood to be positive 11. So now our equation is this. 2 times something minus 4 gives you 11. Well, we have the variable on one side. Now our goal is to get this x completely by itself. There is a certain order that you need to do things here. Um, you can kind of do it other ways, but this is the typical way and that I'm going to show you right here. We got subtract 4. We're subtracting 4. The opposite of subtracting 4 is to add 4. Now some of you may have done this at the very beginning of the problem. That is totally fine. But I decided to do it now because negative 4 plus 4, that cancels out. Bring down what we have left. 2x is left over here. Equals, combining what we have here now, is 15. So our new equation is now 2 times something gives you 15. Well, maybe you do know it, maybe you don't know it, but that is 7.5. 2 times 7.5 gives you 15. Or some of you may say 15 over 2. That's the same thing. I'll show you that on the calculator in a second. But we're taking 2 and we're multiplying it by something. The inverse operation of multiplying is to divide. You do not want to subtract here. Let me show you what would happen here if we subtracted. First of all, I see this all the time when I'm grading students' work, and they're subtracting that 2. But we cannot combine these. That's 2x. That's minus 2. These are not like terms. So we cannot cancel those 2s out. Be careful with that. Think about what you're doing here. You're multiplying 2 times a number. So we divide by 2 to get rid of it. 2 divided by 2 gives you 1. Well, 1x is really just x because that's an understood 1 there. 2 divided by 2 is 1. That is not 0. So we have 1x is equal to 15 over 2. And if you grab your calculator and type in 15 divided by 2, you will get 7.5. So that is our solution to the equation. Now let's check our work by taking 7.5 and plug it into this x and plug it into this x and let's see if we get the same answer on this side and this side. So on the calculator, I'm going to take 5 times this number 7.5 that we got for x. 5 times 7.5. That equals 37.5. Now let's subtract 4 from it. So subtracting 4, we get 33.5. So when we plug in 7.5 here and we work all this out, we get 33.5. Well, for this equation to be correct, this needs to be equal to 33.5 over here when we plug 7.5 into x. Let's see if that works. So taking 3, I'm doing this side now, 3 times 7.5. That gives you 22.5. Let's add 11 to it and we get 33.5. So therefore, this is the correct solution because when we plug this number into here and here, we get the same number on this side 
as what we get on this side. So 7.5 is the solution to our equation. The answer to the problem is not 33.5. That is just what we get on both sides of the equal when we check our work. Moving on to number 22, this is an equation with a fraction in it. We can rewrite this as x over 3. That's another way you can write a fraction bar. Minus 6 is equal to 4. So we want to take some number. We want to divide that number by 3. And then once we divide by 3, we want to subtract 6 from it. And we want to get 4 for an answer. Now, some of you may be able to say, hey, that's 30. What's 30? Well, 30 divided by 3 is 10. 10 subtract 6 gives you 4. That is the answer to the problem. The answer to the problem is x equals 30. But let me show you how to solve that just in case you can't reason through all those numbers in your head. Or sometimes you may get funky answers, and uh, you know that's why we want to know these techniques. Since x is already on the left-hand side and there is no variable over here, we want to focus on getting these numbers away from the x. One way to do this is to get rid of the 6 first, and then we'll handle the 3. Kind of like how we handled the 4 first over here, then we took care of the 2. So to get rid of that 6, since that 6 is getting subtracted, I'm going to add it to both sides because negative 6 plus 6 gives us 0. It cancels out. We are left with x over 3, or x divided by 3. Bring down our equals. 4 plus 6 gives you 10. So now our equation is something divided by 3 gives you 10. It's still 30, right? 30 divided by 3 gives you 10. Well, just in case this number was an ugly number, the way we can get rid of this 3, since you are dividing by 3, is to multiply by 3. So multiply both sides by 3. Now, what really goes on over here? Really, this 3 divided by this 3 gives you 1. Um, there is a Think about multiplying by fractions. If we take 3 times x, that gives you 3x. And then there's an understood 1 technically right here. And 1 times 3 gives you 3. So notice we do have a 3 over 3. And a while ago, we canceled out the 2 over 2 because that was 1. Well, same thing here. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we can cancel that out. We are left with x equals 10 times 3 gives us 30. So as I mentioned back at the beginning, before we started working this problem out here, 30 was the answer because 30 divided by 3 gives you 10. 10 minus 6 gives you 4. Now there are tons of problems online. You can go to Google and type in solving linear equations. These are examples of linear equations. And there's tons of worksheets online with answers. Uh, and you definitely want to practice this before you go in and tackle the T's test. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.